What is going on, everybody? Hope the guys are doing well out there. That is right. It is time for another Sports Card Radio podcast here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, and the other places that you get your podcasts. This is the number one longest running sports card podcast in the business I am your host, and it is great for you to be here. Now, what we are going to talk about on today's show is, look, baseball is about to start. Basketball is in full swing. But, of course, we're going to take you to the world of football and talk about a little bit about the 2024 NFL draft. we got that about a month and a half away. You've got some top picks. Caleb Williams out of USC seems to be the consensus number one pick. You've got Ohio State's Marvin Harrison Jr., who looks like maybe the consensus surefire, like great player, if you will. And there's a lot of other picks as well. Uh, We are going to rewind time a little bit back to the 2021 NFL draft and just give you a quick overview on how it's worked out when you had over five quarterbacks or five quarterbacks picked in the first round. That is the projection this year. You're going to have three, four, five, maybe even more quarterbacks than that picked in the first round. Now, also, what we are going to be doing on today's show is give you a market update for all of the top quarterbacks that are already in the NFL. We'll take a look at Patrick Mahomes card prices after winning, I believe, his third Super Bowl. We also look at many other players, basically all of the top quarterbacks that have prism cards. Take a look how they performed over the last year. We'll dive into, well, you know, towards the end of the show, we'll talk a little bit about selling cards. There's been a a lot of commentary about Check Out My Cards, how they must be going out of business. They must be struggling We'll show you our actual sales numbers to let you decide. Also give you an idea of some of the pickups that I've just recently had on eBay. Give you an idea, just again, from kind of a seller's perspective. I hesitate to use the word investor's perspective, but since uh, Jeff Wilson is no longer really providing investment advice anymore, he is strictly running the world's largest and America's card shop over in the great state of georgia i hope you all find us very well i certainly appreciate the sports car dad for shouting out our program i believe it was a a couple of weeks ago And, and what i liked about it is he said he was on his way back i think he was on a trip somewhere and he was about to get on an airplane and and there was the podcast format so i love to hear where you listen to the sports card a radio podcast. Are you watching it here on YouTube and sorting through some pictures of men? Are you on a drive? I hope you're not watching the YouTube video as you're on a drive. You certainly can play it over your speakers. Are you on a walk? Is this something you put on before you go to bed or as you're making dinner? Let me know down in the comments below if you're watching here on YouTube where and how you're listening to the Sports Card Radio podcast or you can get at me on twitter at sports card radio same thing on instagram would love to see you guys over there as well let's jump into today's program again it's going to be football heavy so if you don't like the pid skin it, this may not be the podcast for you obviously we've got the nfl draft coming up there's going to be a ton of hype there's going to be every breaker is going to be telling you that each one of these players is so hot and is a must have. There's a lot of other people in this hobby that are going to be saying the same thing. All of the card manufacturers are going to be telling you that Drake May and Caleb Williams and uh, all these quarterbacks that are set to be drafted. We should have several in the first 10 picks of the draft, including some that will likely go later in the first round. Everybody's going to be telling you that these are the next superstars. And that's what they were telling you back in 2020. One, just a few short years ago, you had Trevor Lawrence go number one. And look, T-Law has had a a very nice career and has carved out some, had some really good games and good statistical seasons with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But as we'll note with his card prices here, hasn't done a whole lot. Zach Wilson is probably a season or two from being out of the NFL. The same with Trey Lance, who Never really has gotten a full shot to really take a team somewhere. But, you know, look, he was on the San Francisco 49ers, and we certainly saw where they were 
last year. Justin Fields looks like he's on his way out of the Chicago Bears. Also, probably very much like Zach Wilson and Trey Lance in a few years. We won't even remember these guys' name. And the last quarterback picked in the first round was none other than Mac Jones, who, again, also almost nobody is going to know in a couple of years. Kyle Trask was picked in the second round. Kellen Mond in the third, along with Davis Mills, who's had some minor success. And then finally, you got Ian Book all the way in the fourth round. I just picked one of the NFL drafts. You can go back through time, through the Sam Darnold draft, through any draft, and becoming a great quarterback in this league is actually a complete crapshoot. And what we've seen over the past couple of years is many sports card buyers and many sports card, quote, investors have really piled into the quarterback position. And look, in some cases, it has paid off. The golden boy, the golden child, if you will, after Tom Brady retired is Patrick Mahomes. His 2017 Prism card. Now I'm going with a PSA 9 only because there's a few more in terms of relative population. There's a few thousand that compares to the rest of the cards that we are going to look at. His PSA 10, a little bit harder to get your hands on. Now, Patrick Mahomes has obviously had an illustrious career, would be a first ballot Hall of Famer if he were to happen to retire today, but chances are he's probably got several more good years in him, and my guess is the Kansas City Chiefs organization will make another run at the Super Bowl at, at, at least one more time in his career. Now, <laughs> given all that, notice over the last year, so I've got a yearly chart on Patrick Mahomes, and look, you can look at these uh, under a, a different microscope. You can look at the two-year. You can look at the all-time. I'm just looking at this over the last year for all of these quarterbacks to keep it you know, relatively standard. Now, Patrick Mahomes obviously had the best year you could possibly have as an NFL player winning the Super Bowl and lead, and really leading his team to that win. It wasn't like he handed the ball off. wasn't like his – I mean, the defense did play well in the Super Bowl, but it, it was Patrick Mahomes that, that really, really was the catalyst to that win. And notice his card price over the last year, again, on his 2017 prism, is up 28% over the last year. But here's a couple of things that you need to, to keep in mind. Even if you pluck this card near the lows, currently this card – is valued at about, we'll call that about $1,100. But numerous times over the last year, you could have picked this card up for about $200 cheaper or about $900. But here's some things to keep in mind with this card ladder data. First of all, it doesn't include sales tax. And if you live in a high sales tax state like I do here in California or any of the number of ones out here in the United States, or if you don't send this card to a vault, which doesn't pay sales tax, and there's numerous vaults out there that allow you to avoid sales tax, including the, the collector slash PSA slash golden vault. You have the PWCC vault. You have alt. Uh, there's a number of them out there where if you buy this card on eBay or buy this card somewhere and you send it to the vault, then you do avoid paying sales tax, at least at the point of sale. I don't know if that's legal or not, but I'm just saying you're not going to be charged sales tax. But let's assume you are charged sales tax on a $900 or $1,000 purchase. That's actually relatively significant. That's going to be $60, $70, $80, depending on where you live. And then we have to talk about reselling this card. On the low end of fees, you could be free. You could be selling this card on Twitter or on a forum or social media, and you could experience no selling fees and capture this entire rate of growth for this Patrick Mahomes. But chances are you probably aren't going to be in that position. You're going to be selling this on eBay or one of the other marketplaces where you're likely to pay 10, 15, maybe as high as 20% fees. So this 28% growth of the last year on Patrick Mahomes, which again, had a fantastic season and has had a fantastic career. After sales tax and after some kind of marketplace selling fee, well, you're really not going to be breaking the bank on that type of quote unquote investment. Jordan Love had a fantastic year. I think with Patrick Mahomes, one of the reasons why we haven't seen really huge movement in his cards, at least with this prism one, is a lot of this stuff is priced in. And I think that's what a lot of people that got into this hobby in 2019, 2020, 2021, the Jeff Wilsons, all the sports card investor types, what they didn't realize 
is that a lot of stuff is priced into these cards already. They real the the athlete really has to surprise you. And we'll get to one here in a second. We'll get to Brock Purdy here in a second. Look, he was picked last in the NFL draft. He almost went undrafted and then he took his team to a Super Bowl. That obviously is incredibly surprising. And if you look at Brock Purdy prices, well, they have really fluctuated from low to high because his performance has been very surprising. Whereas if you look at Patrick Mahomes graph, Everybody expects this guy to go to the Super Bowl, if not win it. And so a lot of that is priced in to his cards. Jordan Love is somewhere different on that spectrum. This year was his first year in the Packers organization where he had full reins of the team. He certainly had a couple of years to sit behind Aaron Rodgers and kind of groom himself, very similar to the way Aaron Rodgers did. And really towards the end of the year, Jordan Love had the Packers playing great football and they obviously made a fantastic run late in the season. And you saw this card really just over the past couple of months, if you really shrink this down, Jordan Love's 2020 Prism card is up over 52% just over the last three months. So even factoring in some kind of sales tax and certainly some kind of selling fee, you could have really cashed in on this card. And you, you probably could have bought quite a few of them in the 30, 40, even $50 range and, and very comfortably been able to sell them for $70, $80 when he was making his playoff run. If you stretch this out a little further back to a year, growth rate on Jordan Love's Prism card up 21%. Now, the aforementioned Brock Purdy, his 2022 Prism base card in PSA 10 condition is currently worth about $145, but over the last year has been down as low as about $50. But unlike a lot of these other players has really fluctuated. You've had some really massive rise in value of this card once worth over $300 over the past year. So you could have gone from 50 to 300. I don't know how many sold at that $300 level, but you certainly could have got off of this card for well over a hundred dollars most of the year. And you could have gotten quite a few of them down at about $50. But this just goes to show you quarterback with outstanding performance, also a quarterback with not as many cards as everybody else. Cause he was picked last in the NFL draft. Nobody really thought much of him. I don't think he was even invited to the rookie premiere. His card values just up five and a half percent over the last year. So this time last year, you could have correctly predicted Brock Purdy was going to have a great season, take the 49ers to the Super Bowl. And unless you timed your sales at the perfect time, you'd basically be flat on that. Now, the other golden boy in the NFL or one of the other ones is Joe Burrow with a, another season marred by injury. And so that's the question mark as you head into next year with Joe Burrow and maybe a couple of other quarterbacks as well on this list is can he stay healthy? When he stayed healthy, he's taken the Bengals to the promised land. When he has gotten hurt, the team just simply cannot recover. And speaking of not recovering, Joe Burrow's 2020 Prism base card in PSA condition has not recovered from its earlier price earlier this year, trading closer to $250 each. Now the value is closer to $145. That is a 40% decline just over the last year in Joe Burrow. Now, if you sh shrink this out to the last three months, you are actually seeing some accumulation here. And we'll also see this with other players on the list. We'll see this with Justin Herbert and a handful of other players. Now, what I think you are you are seeing at the quarterback position are there are people kind of quote unquote dip buying or accumulating these cards with the idea that they're going to sell them towards the beginning of the football season or the beginning of the football season hype. That's not a bad strategy, but boy, you do have to execute on that. And we also can see over the last three months, you do have a 22% rise in Joe Burrow. But again, you have to offset this with any type of selling fees and sales tax that you're paying for the cards. Another quarterbacks who last year was marred by injury, but people are particularly still bullish on, particularly because he has a, a tremendous amount of talent. And when he has stayed healthy, he has played relatively well. It's just his team has not had any uh, team success like Cincinnati, like the 49ers and like the Chiefs had more recently. And that's Justin Herbert. Now they've got a new coach in town and that has 
people very excited, although <laughs> Jim Harbaugh may be tough on this guy if he's not putting up the type of effort in practice and those types of things that he comes to expect. Even so, Justin Herbert cards over the last year are down 18%. If you shrink this down to the three-month, man, you are having people come in and buy Justin Herbert. So the Justin Herbert train is back on up 62% over the last year. You've gone from like 75 back up to $121. But just keep in mind, if this is your strategy, I think you really got to start taking profits. The population on this card is absolutely huge. And I think you've got a lot of this price action is driven by speculators who, again, all have the same goal in mind and all have the same trade in place. They are buying Herbert now with the idea that they're going to sell later on some kind of performance or hype boost. And when they all start listing their cards and they all try to get off of them, well, sometimes the price action is doesn't follow that. Now, speaking of negative price action, Trevor Lawrence, the one quarterback from 2021 who looks like he'll stay in the league for a couple of more seasons. Tell you what, it's not showing up in his prism cards. Over the last year, Trevor Lawrence prism cards are down 51%. This card was like over $300 currently with a value of 149. That's what I am noticing kind of consistently here. If you look at PSA 10 prism cards of Lawrence, they're valued at 149. You look at Herbert, they're valued at about 120. You look at Burrow, about 149. You look at Purdy, about 145. And then Jordan Love, a step below those quarterbacks in terms of, at least from hobby popularity, right at that $100 level. So I feel like you have a little bit of a floor price that collectors are willing to pay in that 120 to 140 level for those upper echelon quarterbacks. And Lawrence is still in that level. Now, he has population on his prism far less. If you shrink down to a PSA 9, the price action is relatively the same, though. Down 42% over the last year from $32 down to about 19. One thing that we're not seeing with Lawrence that we're seeing with some of the other quarterbacks is not aggressive buying of Lawrence. And some of that could be just due to the fact that the team is just not ready, it appears, to kind of take that next step where some of these other teams have already taken that step or could potentially do that again over the last three months. Lawrence's PSA 10 card still down. 25%. Now, one of the quarterbacks that is just dripping with talent and one of the oldest on the list here is actually Lamar Jackson. His prism card date backs to 2018. Not a huge population on this, but the card value is sitting right about $175. Although you did have some massive interest in this one in early January, as some people thought maybe he would be heading to a Super Bowl card prices ticked up into the $300 range, even as high as $475. But over the last year, all things considered, Lamar Jackson's prism card is down 28%. And over the last three months is down about 20% as I just squashed a bug. Sorry about that. I know that makes for great radio. Now, another quarterback on this list that's been in the league for a little while is Dak Prescott. His 2016 Prism's got a population sitting right around 1,500. We're also seeing that kind of $150 level. Again, this is on the PSA 10 side. Right about $115, or excuse me, $150 is where collectors are willing to pay. Now, Prescott's card prices stayed relatively steady over the last year. You did have a high price of up or closer to $250 and a low price of 91, but you had relatively stable performances. Most people know what you're going to get out of Dak Prescott. You're going to get some great games. You're going to get them on TV a lot, but you're just not going to get them on TV doing anything in the month of December and January. The Cowboys just have not had any postseason success in a while, but particularly under Dak Prescott and his cards over the last year are down 12%. And what we're also seeing with him is we're, we're actually seeing collectors not pile in to him. And so you're not seeing the momentum you're seeing with Herbert, maybe some of these other guys over the last three months, Prescott's cards are down 25% as some people might fear the Cowboys might be looking to move on. Now, Josh Allen, also from the 2018 Prism class, 
He's still got very strong price on his, even with a population over 2,000. His value is $250. You compare that to Lamar Jackson. Again, same draft, probably has had as much success in the postseason and from a team and, and an individual performance. Lamar might even be greater than that. His card value, exact same card, less population actually is worth $175. So Josh Allen is beating him in a lot of cases, but over the last year, sellers have just dumped this card. It was as high as $487, but consistently in that $400 range. And over the last year, card price is down about 38%. Over the last three months, again, very similar to Prescott and Jackson, you are not seeing collectors pile in here. It's still down over 6% over the last three months. Now, Tua got a massive population at 3,600 on his PSA 10. His is way under trend in terms of of value now that's some of that has to do with just the overall population but you're just not seeing a lot of confidence in to it even though his team had a lot of success they just kind of petered out towards the end of the season over the last year his prism cards down about 12.6 percent with a low price down at about 33 dollars so we're not far from the low price Low price over the past 52 weeks is 33. We're sitting at about a $45 value on this card. The high price was at 118 when the Dolphins were really rolling kind of in uh, mid-October. They were basically, I think, at one time, potentially the best team in the NFL. You're also not seeing that demand for his cards pick up over the past couple of months, over the last three months to be specific, down 14% on Tua and now finally the last quarter and, and really we talk about how the NFL has so many great young quarterbacks to be honest with you yes I didn't include Matthew Stafford here I didn't include Jared Goff in this list which I, which I probably should have I I don't have Aaron Rodgers in here who's probably towards the end of his career uh, guys outside and you could maybe throw Kirk Cousins on, on you know this list as well in terms of statistics but we think about the NFL having all these great young quarterbacks. I showed you all the ones, at least from a collectible standpoint, that are any good. You have one, Mahomes, two, Jordan Love, three, Burrow, four, Brock Purdy. You have five, Justin Herbert, six, T-Law, seven, Lamar Jackson, eight, Prescott, who's, you know, again, still getting kind of old, nine, Josh Allen, 10, and Tua, and 11, and Jalen Hurts. That that's barely a third of the league. And, and, and it just it kind of goes back to our original point that you are going to have four or five new quarterbacks that are going to get hyped up. And the chances are four or five of them are not going to be anything in this league in a couple of years. Jalen hurts over the past 52 weeks has seen his prism card decline by about 3.6 percent. He's had pretty wild swings as low price of forty eight dollars. We're, we're not far from that at about a sixty two dollar value. His high price upwards of two hundred and thirty five. We're also not seeing with him a lot of interest in picking him up before the season. His card price is down about 32.5% just over the last three months. So you're really only seeing interest in Burrow. You're seeing some interest in Purdy. You're definitely seeing interest in Justin Herbert, maybe the most. But most of these other quarterbacks are seeing their card prices not only decline over the last year, but even over the past three months as well. Tell you what, sports card investing is not for the faint of heart. It's not easy, and it's one of these things that even if you pile into the number one sport from a viewership perspective, and then you also pile into the number one position, and even if you piled in to Patrick Mahomes, really across the board, factoring in selling fees and some initial sales tax when you purchase the card, you're not looking at really explosive gains with any of these players, and we'll see how that carries over into next year. Now. A lot of people are bashing, check out my cards. Certainly their shipping times deserve to be discussed and deserve to be called out, especially when they're not meeting those times. But what we found out was most of these people are shipping the economy service and check out my cards has basically said that service is running behind schedule while the rest of their business is more or less running on time. Fairway sports card. You got to be careful, guys. 
There's a lot of guys that call themselves sellers. This guy says he's a top rated eBay store and social like, you know, he thinks he's a, a top rated sellers. He says, check out my cards has to be going out of business, right? Here are my past sales. I've run the last two years. How am I running a 60% off promotion and not one sale? He has to ask guys. He has to ask card purchaser because card purchaser is going to tell him. But luckily there are some smart people on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. And he says, this guy right here, Baker's dozen says your items are priced way too high. You have a Trey Lance rookie listed for $24 and they sell for maybe $5. And that was basically the rest of what people said. This guy saying you have a Trey Lance silver prism listed at 17 and it's a dollar 50 card. So even 17 and 60% off what people need to understand about check on my cards is it, it's a marketplace. It's not like eBay. I have sold stuff on eBay where I'm not the lowest price. It could be a shipping time thing. It could be a feedback thing. It could, it, there could be a number of different things. You could be a promoting and advertising your listing. You could have a better picture or a description or, or whatever, maybe have combined shipping. There's a lot of reasons why certain sports card sellers can get more money for certain cards on eBay. It is a marketplace, but it works differently than check out my cards. Check out my cards has basically the lowest price listed for every card. And it's really a race to the bottom. We've always said over here at sports card radio, it's a place to buy and sell your cards. I wouldn't be sending cards in, even though they've kind of introduced kind of grade and flip type of things. It's, it's still not something I would do very often. You're trying to find desperate sellers like this or people that need money. And you're trying to buy their cards super, super cheap, reprice them and sell them. And guys, we've been doing it on check on my cards since 2011 jeff wilson didn't start telling you guys to buy cards up until a couple of years ago and this is why we can get on our programs not only here on the podcast but our live stream and and our social feeds and we can speak with confidence about buying and selling baseball cards because we have a long track record of it in 2012 we sold over 34,000 cards that again this was 12 years ago this was before people were kind of doing this and this was before people were actually thinking about this as a business other than just the select few people that would typically set up at a show like the national and we've consistently sold a lot of cards this is our main account on check out my cards sold over a hundred thousand cards and as you can see over the past couple of years the sales have been relatively consistent since 2021 we've had roughly ten thousand dollars worth of sales this year we're probably tracking for just like slightly more than that i have a smaller account on check out my cards where i really just kind of buy and sell michael jordan and kobe bryant cards notice that in 2019 and 2020 were my best year you should have been selling into the boom. You should not have been buying. That was your time to sell. I own that in a lot of cards more recently. I've been buying cards and again, on pace to probably match, maybe exceed the last two totals. Again, this is a smaller account, six, $700, but our main account is doing almost a thousand dollars a month in sales. And again, this is on the side, kind of a side thing, something that we do have up in the browser window and we're more or less doing for fun. Now, more recently as well, I've been buying some other cards. These are going to be sent to a vault. So number one, I avoid paying sales tax up front. Number two, I don't ever have to touch the cards. All of these cards I'm going to show you, I am going to buy them. I'm going to have them shipped to a vault. I'm going to click a couple of buttons and eventually they'll likely sell. That's the idea. Hopefully it works out. We'll end up seeing. I'm just going to show you a couple of the cards that I bought recently. I, I wouldn't expect these cards to really have a lot of upside potential, but at the same time in the current market that we're in, I think these th things at the very least hold their value. Here's an 0405 exquisite collection, Richard Jefferson. I paid $103 for it. Again, on this card, I, I don't see a lot of potential for this to exponentially grow in value, but at the same time, I don't see a lot of potential for me to be sitting here a year later, like on a T-Law Prism, down 51%. If this card's selling for $50 next year, I'd be relatively surprised. Number one, there's not many of these. And number two, they just simply don't make basketball cards like this anymore, particularly 
coming from upper deck, obviously. And so a card like this, I'm going to buy for 103. I'm going to price it for like 150 and I'll take pretty much anything that lands me a profit. I liked this card that definitely paid up for it. Definitely paid a high comp on this one. This is a 2011 tops Allen and Ginter George Bush base card. There's an autograph from this set, which I'd love to get my hands on those tend to sell for four or 5,000 bucks. I'm not quite in that stratosphere in terms of purchasing power, but if one comes up, maybe I'll do that. And look, I'm not the biggest George Bush fan uh, towards the end of his presidency presidency nobody really was more recently he's fallen back into favor a little bit with really old school um republicans but more surprisingly it, it's actually democrats that look more fondly upon george bush now than certainly when he was president and a, and a tutor he was very unpopular at times particularly from the left in his second term with the Iraq war and all that other stuff going on in 9-11. In a lot of ways, he was the reason why Barack Obama, became his, his run for presidency was so effective. He ran on hope and change. And it was mostly directed at President Bush, who again has gotten more popular. This is a PSA 10 version of this base card. Iconic, iconic first pitch that he threw out just shortly after 9-11 at Yankee Stadium. I think the population on this one is less than 30. I paid six, we'll call that $69. I'm going to price it at 99 and just hold it and, and not be in a hurry to sell this one. Also a card I'm not in a hurry to sell is this Sammy Sosa 1999 Bowman's Best Refractor PSA 10. These are very hard to find for sale as is. And then in PSA 10 condition with all these lines on here. There's all these print lines that happened with Bowman best. You guys know this Bowman best had really nice quality back in the still do, but in 1989, very high quality card, but you tended to have print lines and other things. This card in PSA 10 condition numbered out of 400. I paid 122. another card. I'll probably price in the 150 range. And again, I'll take a $10 profit on this one. And some of you guys might be laughing at that, but at the same time, you'll probably praise Jeff Wilson for, for literally doing the same thing and having to sell the card, pick, pack and ship the card, package the card, pay employees, bubble mailers, tape, risk of return, all this other stuff. I'm literally buying these cards. Again, I am buying these cards. I'm never going to touch them. They're going to go to a vault. They're going to get priced. And one day they're going to get sold. I love this set. I love these cards. Constantly looking for them. This is a 99 Flair Showcase Tom Glavin. Row 3, 45 of 99. There's only 99 of these. Very hard to not only find one of these cards for sale, but find one in PSA 8 condition. Not the highest grade condition you can obviously find in this card. I paid 31. I, newsflash, I would have paid more for this one. I'm going to price this probably in the $50 to $60 range. And I'll take anything north of about $40. And one last card. I actually sold this card already. I like just these really under the radar gold refractor cards. This is a Chase Headley gold refractor from 2013 Tops Chrome. It's in PSA 9 condition. It's numbered 48 of 50. And I only paid $5 for it and I already sold it. I made like uh, 3 or $4, which again, some people might laugh at. I sold this card for $9, I think with a 10% selling fee. So I made, th I think about $3 selling this. Again, what you don't want to look at is the dollar value. What you have to look at is the margin. If you buy a card for five and you sell it for eight and you make $3 or $2 even, that is very, very strong, what they call in the financial world, gross margins. And I'm targeting a 10 to 20% gross margin. So essentially a 10 to 20% markup on all of these. And sometimes, sometimes your best markup are these cards, again, that most collectors simply ignore. Folks, that was the Sports Card Radio Podcast for March 6th. 2024 we'll be back some other time some other pace make sure you check out our live stream on thursday until then thanks for tuning in guys and we are out of here